quick video today, ladies, about short luteal phases and what you can do to help improve your luteal phase deficiency. Hi ladies, welcome back to Fertility Mom. If you've been trying to get pregnant for any length of time and you're looking for good evidence-based information on how you can optimize your health and get pregnant, then make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the little bell notification so that you know when I upload you new content every single week. Today we are actually doing a quick video. I know I say that every single week, but it's gonna be quick today, I swear. We're talking about short luteal phases and how you can improve those things naturally. Now, a luteal phase is that period of time between ovulation and you getting your period. Ideally, it should be between 12 and 14 days. If you have 11 days or less, we need to start looking and making sure we're doing everything we can to lengthen that window out. We could talk about all the studies that have been done about this and whether or not it really impacts fertility and impacts implantation, but for the most part, whenever I see a luteal phase defect, it's not a standalone thing. Your system is all connected. So if we have a luteal phase defect or something wrong in your menstrual cycle, it's a communication from your body that it needs something more and your fertility might be suffering a little bit. So if you have a luteal phase that's 11 days or less, we need to start looking at things to help improve that. The first thing that I find in my patients is that they are low on their protein intake. Protein is a fertility building block. It is incredibly important in every aspect of your body and we need to make sure we're having enough of it. Now the protein requirements are a lot higher than we previously thought. So I recommend my patients getting at minimum 1.2 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight per day. You could check down in the comment box below or the description box below where I'll have the numbers there for you so you can calculate it out yourself. But you need to number one, make sure you're having enough protein per day. The second thing you can do to help improve your luteal phase defect is to add in some vitamin C supplementation. I recommend this to be taken at least 1,000 milligrams a day. Sometimes it can be up to 3,000 milligrams per day depending on what's happening for you. But I recommend to at least start with 1,000 milligrams. And in some studies, this has been shown to increase your progesterone by up to 70%. And this can help lengthen out your luteal phase. So vitamin C, I mostly recommend for almost everybody. Not everyone should have vitamin C. If you're high on your iron, you should not be adding in vitamin C. But for most people, adding in vitamin C is a great way to help with that luteal phase. The third thing that is really important for luteal phase defects is making sure that we have good stress management and good sleep. Having a lot of chronic stress all the time and also poor sleep, it's kind of putting like a weighted blanket over your hormones. It's really going to start to affect how your menstrual cycle is. It may shorten it. Your period length will be smaller. Maybe your bleeding will be lighter you will start to notice changes within your menstrual cycle when we have a lot of chronic stress and not enough sleep. So these are two things we definitely wanna work on. You can check out some of my other videos on stress specifically, because this is much more than avoiding stress and it's much, much more than just relax. I hate it when people tell anybody to just relax. I am not saying that. There's also no avoiding stress, right? Stress is part of life, it's just part of life. And so we can navigate through stressful times if we have the right tools. I've had lots and lots of patients go through incredibly stressful times like the death of their mother and get pregnant that very cycle or the next cycle because we're employing the right stress management techniques for them. So that's important, check out those other videos. These are things like closing the stress loop, deep breathing techniques, and other things as well. And in terms of sleep, we wanna make sure we're increasing the amount of sleep that you're getting. If you have trouble falling asleep or you're waking up in the middle of the night, this is a signal to us that our brain hormones and our other hormones are a little out of whack and we need to work on that system as a whole. A couple of things that you can do to help improve your sleep are brain dumps at night. So kind of writing down everything that's jumbled around in your brain, all the lists, all the to-dos, everything that's in your brain, put it out onto a piece of paper and then you can just be done with that. Another thing is increasing your melatonin. You can take melatonin at night and you can also increase magnesium glycinate. There's many other things that you can do to help improve your sleep, but if you're finding that you're going to bed very late at night, we need to start working on that as well, pulling that bedtime up by 15 or 20 minutes every single night. One of the very first things that you're gonna do if you are having trouble sleeping 
is you're going to actually make sure you're getting enough bright light in the morning. So I recommend going outside first thing in the morning and getting at least 10 minutes of bright light. Even on a cloudy day, that's gonna give you enough light to start waking up your brain and it starts to balance out the circadian rhythm. So that's one of the first things that I do recommend doing is getting outside and getting enough light in the morning. As always, there's a million things that you can do, but let's start with these and we can build from there. I hope you found this video helpful, ladies. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.